It's that time again to see who's the best. This time though with missile infantry. Which unit can outshoot all of the others? That's what we're going to look to find out. Now if you've seen one of these before, you'll know what to expect. We're going to pit the units against each other 5v5 in a controlled situation, just shooting each other out to see who is victorious. Now do understand while we are trying to test things here, it is indeed all really completely pointless because these kind of test situations don't happen in battles. So having straight up clean 1v1 fights is a kind of rare thing. But these tests are a bit more useful specifically for two things. A, learning units. If you're new to the game and you don't know your units yet, this can help you get to grips with them as I'll talk about their abilities and why they're winning and losing. And secondly, to help everybody learn different matchups. You may go into a shootout with another unit thinking you have a good matchup there, but it actually could be a bad matchup that you didn't realize. So we'll try to clear up any misconceptions people might have about certain units. So yes, I know these tests are flawed. You don't need to leave me a salty comment about it. I already know. I did experiment with some other ideas on ways to do these tests because it's a little bit different from missile units. I thought about doing kind of an Olympic style event given that we just had the Olympics where we could see who can kill a Shagoth the fastest or who can kill Chosen the fastest. But again, it was just as flawed as any other method. So I thought I'd just keep it the same as what we normally do and you can at least learn who can outshoot who. Now, with all that being said, let's introduce our contestants. Now, there's only nine factions involved in this. I've picked the best units of Warhammer 2. I've left out some factions because their best missile infantry just can't compete with a lot of their units in this competition. For example, Bretonian Archers, Ungol Raiders, Orc Arab Boys. I think they're fairly safe bets on where they're going to place in this competition. So let's just leave them out of it. But I did include a couple of units that maybe don't belong in this competition too much, but they're quite popular units, so I thought people might want to see the matchups and where those can win or lose. So, who do we have? For the Dark Elves, the Dark Shards with shields. For the Dwarfs, it's the Thunderers, of course. Handgunners, in for the Empire. Representing the High Elves, the Sisters of Avalor. For the lizard men, the chameleon skinks. For the rat men, the jezails. For the kings of the tomb, Ushabti great bows. For the vampires, deck gunners. And lastly, for the wood elves, obviously, the way watchers. So those are all the units we're pitting against each other to find out who's the best. A couple of anomalies in there, but like I say, popular units that I think people would like to see how they do. This is a bit of a crazy one because there's so many variables between missile units, like who has longer range, some have stalk, some have magical attacks and things. So there's a few things that do affect the fairness of tests, which like I say, we can't really make it fair anyway. So we're just going to shoot out letting units use their maximum range. And for the most part, letting them be used how they would be used on the battlefield. We're going to mark it up on this graph so you can see exactly where each unit wins and loses. We'll break it up into the bottom three, the middle three, and the top three. So, let us begin. We'll kick things off with some Dark Elves and Empire, Dark Shards and Handgunners. Handgunners, a very staple missile unit, very simple. They're just good at blasting things down from range. They're very powerful with armor-piercing damage. They don't have any flashy gimmicks or abilities to worry about, so they're very simple, which is always nice. The Dark Shards, pretty much the same kind of thing, except they do have a big silver shield, which blocks a lot of missiles for them and really helps keep them safe. They do have a nice armor-piercing missile though, although they do have a bit of a shorter range than most missile units at only 125. The handgunners, 145, so they're able to get their first volley off just a little bit sooner than the Dark Elves but that's not going to make too much of a difference. And as we can see, the silver shield here, I think, is really saving the Dark Shards as they are pretty badly beating these handgunners. And of course, the Empire units don't have the greatest leadership. So as we can see here, a pretty clean sweep for the Dark Shards, able to beat handgunners very comfortably. So handgunners losing that one, but what about against Chameleon Skinks, a unit that maybe isn't greatly designed for this kind of competition, they don't have armor piercing missiles, but they do have poison and they have stalk. So they stop a lot of units using their full range, which definitely helps them out. And they have a 40% missile resistance and a very loose spacing in their formation. There's a lot of gaps between them. So a lot of missiles will miss. So I included them because I thought it would be interesting to see and because people like to use these a lot. 
But as we can see, the handgunners getting the better of them so far, even though they haven't been able to use all their range. But there is the issue that the chameleon skinks are going to be firing at the edge of their range, which means they're not going to be quite as accurate as the handgunners are. If you've seen my video on ranged secret stats, you'll understand how units are more accurate when they're closer rather than right on the edge of their range. So that's coming into play here. And the chameleon skinks, unfortunately, not able to take down the handgunners. What about the deck gunners, though? A unit with very long range, armor piercing, and the missile parry reduction. Can they also stop Chameleon Skinks? The Skinks with their stalk ability does take away a lot of the advantage of range of the deck gunners, so Chameleon Skinks are getting pretty close before the deck gunners are able to see them, which does mean that the deck gunners are wasting a lot of range. You can see all this space that they didn't get to use their missiles, so maybe that's going to hurt them. They don't have a lot of armor on either, the deck gunners, which means the non-armor piercing missiles of the Chameleon Skinks should have a better time. Looks like the Chameleon Skinks are getting the better of most of these matchups. Deck gunners and their lack of armor really hurting them. They are unbreakable though, of course, so they won't route and run away like the Chameleons will, and like most of these units will. But it looks like the Chameleons are putting out some decent damage, wavering this one on the end. But that 40% missile resistance is pretty huge for the Skinks. It does protect them pretty well. Some wavering going on for the Skinks. One unit's broken, a couple. Nope, they've rallied. They look like they were all going to break. Some vampire units have died. This one on its last legs. Got 300 health. Chameleons should be able to take that one. And it is going to be a pretty decent win for the Chameleon Skinks. They've won four of their five fights. So, Chameleon Skinks are able to beat Deck Gunners. Who knew, eh? Who knew? What about then handgunners versus deck gunners? They'll both be able to use their maximum range in this one, no stalk to worry about, which does mean the deck gunners do get firing way earlier with a 245 range, 100 more than the handgunners. So they'll get a couple of volleys in before the handgunners are even in range. And as we can see, they finally arrived and they're pretty much half dead, these handgunners. The deck gunners have absolutely mashed them. Taking a little, well, taking a fair bit of damage actually themselves fairly quickly. That lack of armor hurting them again, but one handgun is broken here. The other one on the edge not looking so good. There's two down. Deck gunners looking good, wavering. Three, four, there you go. Deck gunners have won it. Probably going to win the fifth as well. So it's a bit crazy in this bottom area. Everybody's beating everybody. Everybody's losing to everybody. And that is going to give us our final bottom three results. So at the bottom of the pile is three of the cheapest units in the competition, as you'd expect. But they all had the same amount of wins, of one. Handgunners could beat chameleons, chameleons could beat deck gunners, deck gunners could beat handgunners, but they couldn't quite pull ahead because of the craziness of things like stalk coming into play for the chameleons and their missile resistance as well, the deck gunners with their extra long range, but their lack of armor really hurt them and they couldn't really defend themselves against anybody else, so it's pretty even. I don't know how to rank these three because they all had the same performance for the most part. But let's move on to the middle three then and see Who's not quite able to get into that top three? Who do you think is going to be in the top three? Drop it in the comments now before you watch and let me know because I'm curious to what people's perceptions are of the best units. Although be careful reading the comments because there might be spoilers down there. Maybe just keep it in your head and then comment at the end instead so you don't risk any spoilers. Up to you. Let's kick off this second part with the Dawi then. Thunderers versus the Dark Elves. Those Dark Shards with shields that beat the handgunners so comfortably. Can they do the same against the heavily armored Dwarf Boys? So far, they haven't done a great deal of damage, but they have taken some themselves, the Dark Shards. But Thunderers are very much a tanky missile unit. They have a lot of armor because Dwarfs, but they also have a shield. Even though it's on its back, it somehow protects them from the front missiles. So that is somewhat taking the advantage away from the Dark Shards with their Silver Shield, which is something they have over most of the other units in this competition, if not all of them. So they are facing a shield whilst also having a shield themselves. And that evens the playing field a little bit for what Dark Shard's strength really is, which is having the silver shield. And as this fight seems to wear on, it looks like it's evening out. The Thunderers have taken quite a bit of damage now, down to about half health, as are the Dark Shards. So a pretty even one, this. They do cost about the same. Dark Shards about 50 more expensive, so not too much at all. Both very tough. Very hard to get rid of. Dwarf leadership is, of course, a little bit better than the elves. They probably have a bigger health pool as well, as elf units tend to have less health than others. But they're hanging in there. Both sides are hanging in there. You expect it from the dwarves, but the Dark Shard's actually doing pretty well to not route and run away so far. It's a close one. 
It's a goddamn close one. Some wavering from the Dark Elves now, though. One unit broken, two unit broken, three, and it's all crumbling away for the Dark Elves. Unfortunately, the Thunderers are just too damn resilient. But where one elf fails, maybe another kind of elf can prevail. The High Elves, Sisters of Avalon versus Thunderers. Maybe they can do it. They've got lots of armor-piercing damage. They've got more range than the Thunderers, so they can get a couple of volleys off before the Thunderers are even able to fire back. As we can see, second volley coming in there. Thunderers start firing now. Of course, the armor advantage still for the Dwarfs and the general toughness. The shield as well. Leadership much better on the Sisters of Avalon, though. And the Sisters will be slightly more accurate than the Thunderers because they're a bit closer and in their range. But as we can see, the health of the Sisters starting to fall with the health of the Thunderers not really budging too much. So how are these Thunderers so tough? How are they able to be seemingly beating a unit that costs about 500 more than them? That doesn't seem right. Maybe these little dwarfs are OP, right? But one thing to remember with the Sisters is that you are paying for magical and fire attacks, both of which aren't really coming into play here. And in fact, the magical attacks are hurting the Sisters of Avalor because the dwarfs, of course, remember they've got a 25% magic resistance. So all of the Sisters' damage is being reduced by 25%. And it is going to lead them to lose to the Thunderers because the Thunderers are just too damn tough. And if you take away 25% of the Sisters' missile damage, it's just not enough. What about the Rattos then? Where do they fare in all of this? How do they fare taking on the Sisters of Avalon? Can the Sisters put the Rats away? They're moving up. They've taken a fair bit of damage already because the Jezails have a pretty huge range at 275. So Sisters of Avalon taking a bit of a pounding as they try to reach the Jezails. They're finally there now. But the Jezails don't have a ton of models and do have a pretty loose spacing. So again, that's going to hurt any other unit like this that's firing into the crowd. Because a lot of those missiles are just going to go in the ground. So you can see the health of the Jezails not really going down too quick despite all these missiles flying in. While the Sisters are getting absolutely hammered from the Jezails who are absolute sharpshooters of course. Looks like the Sisters missiles, well, see, they seem fairly accurate on landing in the unit. The unit's so spaced out that a lot of the shots just aren't landing. Whereas you see with the Jezels, their straight shooting, their low fire arc doesn't really miss too much. And remember, the Sisters are firing at the edge of their range, while the Jezels are about halfway into theirs. So they're much more accurate than the Sisters will be. And the Sisters, unfortunately, looking like they don't really have much to hold on to here. And the Jezels are going to put them away pretty easily. What about a little elf on elf action then? Dark Shards versus Sisters of Avalon. Will that silver shield save the Dark Shards? The Sisters missile damage only a little bit more than the Dark Shards. They do have the range advantage though, so able to get off a couple of volleys before the Dark Shards arrive. Damage seems fairly even so far. A big silver shield not saving those Dark Shards enough perhaps. Sisters taking a fair pounding though, they don't have a ton of armor. And another thing that the Sisters are kind of missing out on in these tests is that they're actually pretty good in a melee fight, which of course they're not doing here. So that's kind of another thing that you're paying for that just isn't getting used in this competition. So this, not really the fairest of fight for the Sisters, I think they're kind of very specific in what you need to use them for because of their magical damage and fire damage, but they are eventually going to be able to put away the Dark Shards. They will beat the Dark Shards overall, but it's a pretty Pyrrhic victory for them because they have taken a lot of damage from those Dark Shards. They do hit very hard, so considering the cost price of these two units, Dark Shards are kind of winning because the damage they've done is more valuable than the damage the Sisters have done. But either way, it's going to be a win for the Sisters as a shootout. Now let's talk about Waystalkers here because they are a slightly unique unit in this competition because they can skirmish. As I said, I'll allow units to fight how they would on the battlefield and these units, these Waystalkers will skirmish. They have 190 range. They can outrange most of the units in this competition. They can just run away, keep blasting them. As you can see, units like the Dark Shards don't have a chance of beating them because they'll never be able to get in range of them. So that gives them a pretty easy win over a lot of the units in this competition as they would on the battlefield, so that's all well and good. But I did try to let the Waystalkers simply trade with these units to see what would happen. So Waystalkers versus Dark Shards in a straight up shootout. The Silver Shield is going to come into effect. We are going to let the Waystalkers fire a little bit early though, using all of their range. And the Waystalkers will arrive fairly beaten up, about a quarter of their health gone maybe, before they can hit the Waystalkers. But the Waystalkers, only 15 armor. 
not a lot. They can't take too much punishment. The big armor-piercing missiles are going to hit for some big damage with that extra base damage they'll be able to do. And we see the Waystalkers are taking a fair pounding. Despite that silver shield of the Dark Shards. And believe it or not, Dark Shards can actually beat Waystalkers in a one-on-one -on -one shootout if the Waystalkers don't skirmish and just stand there and trade. The Waystalkers lose. I found this quite surprising. I thought Waystalkers would quite easily beat most of these units very comfortably, even trading with them. But just to make things more weird and crazy, the Waystalkers can actually beat Thunderers though if they stand there and trade and don't skirmish. Which it's kind of doesn't make sense because the Thunderers were able to beat the Dark Shards, but the Dark Shards are able to beat the Waystalkers, but the Waystalkers aren't able to beat the Dark Shards, but they're able to beat the Thunderers. What? It's just very confusing. They have a bronze shield, they have the big armor, but I guess the Waystalkers high armor piercing damage of 30 is enough to put these Thunderers away. Perhaps it's the extra range that they have over the Thunderers, which the Dark Shards don't have that allow them to win here, but it's pretty crazy. Either way, we're going to count the skirmish runs for the Waystalkers, not these trading ones, because naturally they can outrange most opponents. And with that, we have the mid results. The Dark Shards at the bottom of the mid pile, able to only beat the three bottom units, but nobody else. The Sisters, pretty much the same, but they were able to beat the Dark Shards. So that gives them four wins and four losses. And it's the Thunderers that are up there at the top of the mid game with five wins, but they were unable to beat the top three, which is the Jezails, the Ushabti Great Bows, and the Waystalkers. So, who's the best? What do you reckon? Can any one of these three remaining units beat every other unit in this competition? Let's find out. So let's kick it off with some Great Bows and some Waystalkers. Although this is a little bit of a weird fight, right? Because the Great Bows, they have great range, and that's how they've beaten most of the other units in this competition. And they do have more range than the Waystalkers, but the Waystalkers have Stalk. So the Ushabti Great Bows are able to use their full range advantage. They will be a little bit more accurate though, being closer, because once those Waystalkers come in range and start firing, they will reveal themselves and the Great Bows can start popping off at them. And as you can see, the Waystalkers looking pretty good in this one. They've done a good bit of damage, not taken too much back themselves. They are a little bit more clumped up than the Waystalkers. But of course, there's not too many models in a Ushapti Great Bow unit. They are very spread out. So a lot of the missiles do just miss and go in the ground. And these Waystalkers taking a bit of a pounding. But Great Bows again have the advantage of being undead or just statues. And thus they don't rout and run away. Which as we can see for the Waystalkers is a problem they do have. And some of these Ushapti actually winning pretty comfortably. Maybe starting to turn it around. One wavering. They're hanging in there though. There is some wavering on the Ushabti side. Those are going to start to crumble away. But can they hold on? Both sides not giving up. Nobody routed yet. We'll fast forward a little. See if anyone goes. See if anyone crumbles away. Looking like we might lose some Ushabti. We've lost one way watchers in the background there. That's one win for the Shabti boys. Can they get another? They're all hanging on so much. There we go. Two wins for the Ushabti. Can they take a third? Or can they bring a comeback? Can the Waywatchers make the big comeback on the big boy Ushaptis? Looks like they might win this one. Very close in the numbers in each unit. But of course, Ushapti has less models, but they do have more health in each model. But another thing that you're paying for with the Ushapti as well is their melee capabilities, which aren't going to come into play in this test. So that is something that kind of gets wasted with them. Lost one Ushapti there. It looks like it's a 2-1. 3-1 maybe. There's another win for the Ushapti in the middle. It's all too close this one. So we decided to run it again just to make sure to see who the real victor was. Because it was pretty inconclusive from that last fight. If it's a 3-2, we normally go to a second round. Maybe a third round if it's a 3-2 for the other side. But Waywatchers and Ushapti trading quite evenly here so far. Two very evenly matched units, which is kind of surprising. Given that they both kind of have other specialities like skirmishing for the Waystalkers and melee for the Ushapti. So it's a bit of a weird one. That's what I mean with this ranged who's the best. It's kind of crazy to compare the units like this because there's so many variables between them. It kind of, like I say, it does, doesn't really matter too much, but it's good to know out on the battlefield if you start trading with one of these units, you now know whether you're in a good place to win or not. And these Waystalkers not looking so hot in this one. The Ushapti actually taking a fairly big advantage. They've got plenty of health left in the units that they're beating. There's one gone. 
So Shabti Great Bows this time around seemingly doing much better for some reason. Still not able to use their range because of the stalk. So it's all been the same. But we can see more breakages from the Way Watchers. So Ushepti Great Bows likely taking this one. Three wavering from here. And I think the difference of not routing for the Ushepti has given them the edge. Although they do still have a fair amount of health left. So who knows? But Way Stalkers losing to the Great Bows in this one. So what about the Waystalkers versus the Jezails then? Because the Waystalkers, they had the advantage in this one of being able to skirmish everybody, but there were the three units that they wouldn't be able to skirmish. The Jezails, the Great Bows, and the Deck Gunners. Now the Deck Gunners couldn't even beat Chameleon Skink, so of course they didn't stand much chance. And the Waystalkers only narrowly losing to the Ushabti Great Bows. But Jezails do have a fair bit going for them. They're actually tougher than you might think. Although maybe not this one because he just took an arrow to the knee, the poor fella. But with 70 armor and a silver shield, the Jezails are fairly well protected. And they just quite simply stay put. They don't have to worry about skirmishing. They don't have to worry about any special kind of attacks, magical fire, none of that. They're just a straight shooter. They're very accurate. They've got a low firing arc. They are just very good and well equipped for this kind of competition. The Stalk does give the Waystalkers an advantage to take away some of that range. But of course, the Jezails will be more accurate because they are closer to their target rather than firing at the edge of their range. The Waystalkers, though, in this one didn't have much chance. They really didn't get too much done on the Jezails before they got routed away. Jezails putting Waystalkers in the bin pretty comfortably. So that brings us then to the final. The Ushabti Great Bows. Great range, armor piercing, lots of armor themselves. They won't route and run away. But you are paying for some melee power, which you aren't going to get to use here. But they are more expensive than the Jezails, so it might kind of even out. The Jezails, Silver Shield, lots of armor, armor piercing damage, shield reduction as well, not that that's going to matter against the Ushepti. But of course, their leadership, while not too bad, isn't as good as not routing and run away. So maybe the unbreakableness of the Ushepti might help them hang in there. Jezails able to fire a little bit sooner. Both of these have long range, but Jezails are about 20 longer in the range. So only a little bit enough for time for one volley before the enemy, but not too much of a difference. Although Shepti do have another big advantage here that the Jezail shield won't actually count for too much because their missile attack is classed as an artillery type missile attack. Because it's a big massive bolt, shields don't actually stop those. So their silver shield isn't actually going to save them from anything in this fight. So will that come into play as a big factor and allow the Ushepti great bows to take it? Or can the Jezails hold on? There's one statue down. I love the way Ushepti fall over. They just kind of go completely still and they do like a comedy topple down. It looks like damage is fairly even between the two, though. Jezail's probably a bit of a better fire rate. Got more models in the unit, so more missiles to launch. But of course, the Ushabti, much tougher in their models. They won't die so easy. Some wavering on the Jezail side. Is this where the leadership is going to fail the rats? Or will they be able to hang in there? Can they wear down the Ushabti? Do they have enough? Looking pretty even in some of these other fights. Maybe slight advantage to Jezail some places. This one looking pretty good. Only down to half health, these Jezails. Oh, their Ushepti counterpart is pretty beaten down. Maybe down to its last quarter or third of health. Can the Jezails do it? Can their leadership hold on? Will anybody run out of ammo before they manage to kill anybody? I think that happened in some of the Waystalker fights, but it wasn't enough to really make a difference. So it didn't matter, and obviously there's nothing they could do. They could charge into melee afterwards, I suppose, but I don't think it would have saved them. Ushabti, though, crumbling here. This unit on the end has been wavering for a while for the Jezails, but it's been holding on. Getting down to the last legs of the Ushabti. Ooh, lots of wavering and crumbling. So they're not unbreakable. They will crumble and die, but they won't run away. So they will keep firing and staying somewhat productive the entire time, at least. And they won't count as the loss. This one not looking good. Three models left. Can they hold on? Looks like they're doing it for now. No Jezel routage still. Their leadership is actually quite impressive for rats. They're hanging on pretty damn well. Oh, down to the last two Shepti there. Three left in this one. Can they do anything? They look like they're not doing anything because they stand so still, but they do fire on occasion it's looking good for the Jezails they've won one now two wins for the Jezails 
Can they take any more? Wavering from the Jezels on one side. It's looking pretty good for them. Three down for the Jezels. Is it going to be four? Can the Ushabti win one back or maybe two back? Can they make us test this again? If they can beat two of these Jezels, we'll run it again. If not, it's going to be a fairly decisive victory. But it turns out there's a little bit of crossfire in this one. One of the units of Jezels that's already won is now firing at the remaining Ushabti in this unit. So that's not really quite fair. So we ran it a few more times just to make sure that the Jezels were winning this most of the time. And they were. Pretty much the Jezels had this in the bag. They are the best missile unit in Warhammer 2. They were able to beat the Ushabti pretty comfortably some of the time. Or sometimes they just really only just scrape by. But for the most part, they're able to beat the Ushapti. Unless, of course, if this was a real battle situation, what you would probably do if you were faced with this matchup is instead of just sitting there and trading missiles, you would actually just run the Ushapti up into fighting the Jezels, if it was obviously safe to do so, because they would beat them pretty easily in melee. The Jezels would have no chance against the Ushapti in a melee fight. So there's that kind of variable to think about as well. Would you actually stand here and trade with a unit if you had the opportunity to get into melee with them instead? There's that question to ask. But when it comes to a good old fashioned shootout, the Jezels appear to be the king. They can beat all of the other missile units, at least in this competition in Warhammer 2. I don't think there's any other units in any other factions that would honestly have a chance against the Jezels. If all of these ones can't do it, I don't think anybody else will. Maybe Loth and Seaguard, you could say, might have a chance, but I doubt it. So yeah, there we go. The Jezels are the kings. They are the best of the missile ranged units and rightly so. Honestly, they're just so good for many things. While some of these units weren't really well suited to this competition, the Jezels really are. This is their fight and that is why they are the best. So there we go. There's our top three in the rankings. Jezels able to beat everybody. W's all across the board. The Shapti Great Bow is very much the same just except for those Jezels. And Waywatchers, again, the same, but not able to beat those top two. So there we go. Who's the best ranged unit? It's the Jezails. But of course, this competition, like I said, was a pretty crazy one. Some fairly big surprises along the way, I think. But ultimately, Jezails have come out on top. And that's interesting for Warhammer 2. We'll have to see how well Jezails stay on the top in Warhammer 3, though. That's going to be the interesting thing. How many of these winning units now will still be the winning units in a year's time? If we put this into a ranking with the unit prices on the left there, we can see that things are really all over the place. Like I said at the start, this was going to be a bit of a crazy one because of all the different variables between the units. Now, ranking these units in an order is kind of awkward for the bottom three because they all only beat one unit each other. And the Chameleon Skinks I put at the bottom because honestly, they're probably the worst one for this kind of fight. They're really not well suited to this kind of competition. They want to be able to use their skirmish ability, right? Which they couldn't do against any of these units because they couldn't outrange anybody. Chameleon Skinks are best for skirmishing melee infantry, anything that can't catch them. So this kind of fight really isn't theirs. Although it was a nice surprise that they could beat the deck gunners. But Chameleon Skinks are really one of those units that's best teamed up with three or four of them. Rarely should you ever bring one unit of Chameleon Skinks. You want three or four of them going around together, that's really where their strength is, in numbers. I put the deck gunners at the top of the bottom three just because they seem like a generally better missile unit all round because of that extra range. But hang gunners are damn good at their job, so it's arguable. When it came to the mid three, the dark shards were at the bottom, but they did pretty damn well considering that they only cost 650. And they were able to beat the 1200 cost Way Watchers in a one on one straight shootout, which is kind of odd, right? But of course, Way Watchers naturally would probably skirmish in that fight, so it wouldn't naturally happen like that. The Sisters of Avalon, though, somewhat surprising to some perhaps that they are quite expensive for 1100, and they are only fifth in this whole competition, losing out to Thunderers who only cost 700. But like I said, Thunderers are very simple, they're very defensive, very powerful. They can just get on with their job that they need to do, which is blasting down anything in sight. Sisters of Avalon are a bit more niche in their usage. They have the magical attacks. They have the fire attacks. They are decent in melee. They've got a lot of other stuff going for them that if you don't use, it is kind of a waste of money. So Sisters of Avalon, not great to bring if you just want them to trade with other missile units. They're good at taking down those ethereal units, anything with a big physical resistance, those units that have regeneration, that are weak to fire damage. That's where Sisters of Avalon are really going to shine. 
The Thunderers, like I say, are just great value for money for what they can do. They're just super tough and put out a lot of power. The Way Watchers, great if you can skirmish them and pretty much unstoppable if you can skirmish them. But against those units that they can't out skirmish, they do tend to struggle, such as the Ushapti Great Pose and the Jezails at the top. Only 900 cost for the Jezails and they were able to beat these units that are way more expensive than them. But as I say, that's because the Jezails are really built for this kind of missile on missile competition, although they can destroy pretty much anything. Artillery, large units, cavalry, infantry, Jezails are just fantastic at shooting stuff. Yushepti Great Bows can also double up as good in melee, which the Jezails will never be able to do, as can the Waywatchers a little bit as well. So hopefully that all makes some sense. As predicted, these tests were a bit all over the place. Normally we see price dictating performance, but that really isn't the case with missile units because they're all kind of designed for certain things and have really somewhat limited use in this kind of competition. Most missile units aren't designed simply for taking out other missiles. They're designed for shooting everything else. So when it comes to this kind of competition, there's not many that are purely designed for this. But there we go. Hopefully that all makes some sense. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments. There we go. So Jezails are the kings of the shootout. But like I say, when Warhammer 3 comes along, will they stay there? That's where things are going to get interesting. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future.